Uh, I think this thing needs a bath. If there's one thing we love, it's annoying buzzing noises. Wow. Hi, I'm Jamie. This is Dead Dodge Garage, and this is a 1970 Dodge Dart. It's a custom, whatever that means. It's got some extra those thingies. No vinyl top, which means it's got metal around the back window. And it's a mostly original survivor car. Although it has had a little bit of work done up here. I'm looking at it today because the front left drum brake doesn't really. So we're gonna get it up on the lift and try and figure that out. Then I think we'll knock the mud off this thing and take it for a drive. Mm, going up. Look how solid this thing is. There's all kinds of steel under that mud. There's a little rust here. It's basically identical to my Demon. Ooh, 1970 Dodge script emblem. 1970 only taillights. Unless you got a scamp, then they were used 71 to three. Redline Fratzog dog dishes. Neat. Did you know that slant sixes leak oil from everywhere? That's perfectly normal. Now this is an original 1970 Chrysler car, which means the driver's side lug nuts spin the wrong way. Okay. Super fun story. Normally these drums are swedged in place. A tool is used to expand that stud to clamp the drum there. You can actually separate these two parts, the hub and the drum, by cutting that swedge off. If you just try to beat the studs out, bad things happen. And if you want more information on that, go watch my uh, Barracuda Nightmare Project video on the 67 Daily Driver. Because we've already been here and done this. Well, these studs wouldn't come out, and I've ruined that one, so everything's going great. Anyway, on this one, they were cut so the old drum could be removed, and then this new drum was slipped on, and they weren't swedged back in position, but installing the wheel kind of forced it back on there anyway. And it doesn't want to come back off, so that's not ideal. Ah, yes, anti-seize. Truly the herpes of automotive chemicals. Cleaned, adjusted. Everything looked really good in there, so... Let's see what that gets us. Did you know that you can get the self-adjusters on your drum brakes to do their thing by backing up and hitting the brakes? I did just adjust all four of these, but they might tighten themselves up more, I don't know. Excelsior! What's that noise? Oh God. Oh, it's bad. One technique I learned from an old timer who would replace zillions and zillions of sets of brakes, to go out, drive the car, and ride the brake pedal a little bit. You know, just burn them up a little. <laughs> Helps everything seat together, or something like that. Obviously, if you do this too much, you'll warp drums and rotors and set your brakes on fire, but a few several second long applications of the brake pedal while driving down the road can help your brakes to work better. And after doing that twice, here's what we get. It goes mostly straight until it doesn't. I can't help but notice that there's some front end stuff going on anyway, and it's pulling to the right all the time. That could be related to this issue, but it's much better. So funny, I'm looking over the same kind of hood that my 71 Demon has, so all of a sudden when I hit the brakes there, I thought I needed to hit a clutch too. If you suspect you have a sticky brake, a brake that's either dragging for various bad reasons or a brake that you've adjusted too tightly, it's easy to figure that out. Take the car for a drive, park it, and then feel all the wheels for heat. I'm not feeling any here, so that's a good sign. This is Hazel, my coworker at Rocket Restorations, Laura Lee's reliable daily driver for the last 18 years, mostly. Laura Lee is the second owner of this car, just like I'm the second owner of my Demon. Neat. Before we look at it anymore, I think it really needs a bath. Admire the carpet delete and the amount of steel down there. This is a really good car. Judging by that dry sound from the back of the car, I'm pretty sure this thing needs axle shaft bearings. And I'm also pretty sure it needed axle shaft bearings the last time I drove it. Slant six powered or complete lack thereof as the case may be. No question. This is much better. It's still goofy sometimes, but it's much better. Admire the dog bed in the front seat. That's for Bruno. It's also
also kind of where my right arm wants to be. Man, I really like this car. It's no purple 69 Charger, but it's still really good. Now I've already said this is a 70 dart, but because of some crash damage from many years ago that was repaired, there are some things here that are not correct. If you know what it is, drop it in the comments. No Googling. When did I become the car washing guy? I don't know, but I don't really like it. All right, actually it's quite satisfying at times. Like that, that's just special. Some of this might take a couple tries. Gross. Just a bit of a difference. It might be a little overdue for a bath. Also a buff job, but that's not my problem today. Mmm, <laughs> delicious. Man, it's looking great. At least when it's still damp. Unfortunately, I don't really have the time, let alone the patience, to do a whole lot better than this right now. It's definitely improved. You know, less gungy. All right. Yeah, that's better. I did notice the front right tire was a couple apples short of a whole bushel, so maybe that'll help things. There's a whole lot more that could be done here, but I'm not giving it a full detailed job. I love this car. Always have. I first saw it around maybe 2007. It was already Lorley's daily driver by then. It was like a landmark, a fixture in Olympia. When the old rocket shop was downtown, it was always there. Really, it's my favorite kind of car. A 70 Dodge start that helps, but you know, original and still going. It's used like an actual car. I really like that. Here's an interesting look at old school touch up paint. I've seen this a good few times. I guarantee you, when it went on the car, that fog line would have been blended much better. But the paint they put on after the fact fades worse than the factory paint, so you end up with this look eventually. And it's really interesting because you can actually see right where that touch-up repaint ended. And since we happen to have this thing in front of us, I wanted to point something out about primer. Factory Chrysler paint, as it wears off, it reveals this. There's red primer under there, but there is kind of this gray stuff too. Notice though, it sticks to the paint really well and comes off with it. When you see this bright gray primer staying behind as the paint peels off of the car slowly, that is not original. That's definitely an area that's been repainted. My Demon actually has a large area like that too. The blue paint itself looks really, really close, but the spots where it's chipping off, there's a bunch of gray where there shouldn't be. Now I'm no expert, and I'm sure different cars, different years, different plants are probably different, but this is what you're gonna see when original paint is slowly removing itself from a car. It's kind of cool. Laura Lee bought this 1970 Dark Custom sedan from the original owner around 2005. She bought it from a nice old lady named Esther. I say nice, but apparently she was a, a bit of a firecracker. She bought this car to replace her aging daily transport, but she didn't really like driving it. She got rides to work and left this thing in the garage for most of the time she had it. Some parts, like the special wood grain trim of the dark custom dash, are in pretty nice shape. Other parts, well, a bit worn. I love the patina. I love the little bruises, the scrapes, the evidence that it has in fact been used. Unlike some Western Washington cars, this one still has quarter panels because Esther kept it in the garage all those years. Now I have actually shown this car in one video before. It was uh, how to fix your Holly 1920 carburetor, which definitely involved throwing said carburetor in the scrap pile. It's now got a Carter BBD. <coughs> B, B, S for single. And it actually works. In fact, as you heard, this thing runs great. Not a whole lot of options on this one. Also neat. Admire the custom plate holding the electronic ignition conversion setup. Oh, I love factory firewall runs. They're always right there too. Ugh. I'm not cleaning that. I believe the head was done some years back, but otherwise this engine is basically original. And again, it runs great. Wow, dual horns. The flagship of my fleet 
until I bought my 66 Charger, was a 1970 Dart Swinger. I had a bunch of different V8s and various transmissions in that car over the years. I eventually sold it because I found some rust in a frame rail. Really wish I still had that now. So I've been looking for some years for a suitable replacement. I'd much prefer it to only have two doors, but this is pretty cool too. I guess I could take a sedan. That's not to suggest this one would ever be for sale. I'm pretty sure Laura Lee will be buried in it. It's her baby, which is just awesome. But you gotta see this. This is the original Craigslist ad from when Laura Lee bought the car. 43,900 miles, that's what it had then. It's something like double that now. There's a picture of Esther, the original owner, with the car. She bought it brand new off the lot and took care of it all those years. Here's Laura Lee with the car shortly after she bought it. Look how shiny the paint still was. Esther and Laura Lee even stayed in touch for years. She does want stated for the record that she used to keep this car much cleaner too. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for today. Eventually, we're going to have to do axle shaft bearings and an entire front end overhaul on this car. Not really looking forward to it. At least the brakes work again. That's nice. Oh, great. I missed a spot. Oh, yeah. Nothing but reliable. What a great car. It's kind of funny. I was out on the road in this thing a little bit ago, and a really nice BMW sedan went the other way. And this is a lot like a BMW in many regards. You know, slightly slanted inline six cylinder engine. Uh, four wheels. Uh, that's about it. I can't even put into words how much I'd rather have this than a BMW. I just love it. Now all I have left to do is surprise Laura Lee with how slightly better it looks. Mmm, chocolate. Well, didn't take one covered in mud. Oh well. Well, anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that. I certainly did. Look at that coloration difference. Hmm, thanks for watching. And remember, free candy bars taste way better. Ooh, quick fun fact. Even though this is a sedan, it's still got the same cutouts as every other 70 dart. Those are for a spoiler. Neat. Oh.